this is a United States man of war. Her mission, to maintain the freedom of the seas. The time, now. The place, any one of the world's many trouble spots where an enemy, real or potential, threatens the survival of the free world. This ship has been assigned important, vital jobs. To be ready for any trouble that may develop. To watch. To wait. To fight. A vitally important link in our chain of defense. A chain pulled thin to cover the rim of the free world. To meet the important commitments for our nations and our allies' defense. If this defensive chain is broken by the failure of any ship to fill her mission, our defenses are open and vital areas left unprotected until from somewhere another overworked ship can be drawn to forge a new link. This ship looks ready, ready for anything. She carries the most modern weapons, equipment and electronic devices ever seen aboard a destroyer. But all this is worthless without one important, old-fashioned ingredient. Men. It takes good men to handle this complicated ship and make it do the job properly. Meet some of these men. Fred Gordon, quartermaster first class. The navigator's number one assistant. Roy Anderson, just made fire control technician third class. And he knows the practical side of his rate too. Ed Jacobs, gunner's mate third class, knows the secrets of the 5-inch 54. Lieutenant J.G. Dixon is the ship's communicator and a popular officer. Jimmy Costello, storekeeper second class, another sharp sailor. And then... Ron Kramer and Joe Boyer. A couple of hard-working firemen. You've just met seven good men, tops in their jobs. Seven men the Navy depends on. But these seven sailors could sink this ship. Okay, boy, you take the can paint lock and I bring up the rest of twos. Yeah, I know why you want me to take the can back. Ready to get chewed out for doing a five-gallon can and only using a couple drops. Plus, you had to go and lose the cap. Well, how would I know? Let's get going. Wait a minute. What are you doing? I need a short timer change. You jerk, don't you realize that'll short circuit the whole system, ruin it if any water gets in there? How's water going into all the way up here? Besides, no one to notice. It's not the point. Shit, here comes an officer. What's that? Oh, for Pete's sake. Improving your mind, huh? What's wrong with that? I gotta relax sometimes. You're always in your rack. Hey, Andy, if you threw your radar gadget down in your hole, give me a hand with this monster, will you? Sure, for a small percentage. Boy, this thing's heavy. What do you got in the box? Something good to eat? Ah, uh, something better as far as you guys are concerned. Special question. All right, all right. Take it easy. I'll give you your five dollars. Come on down to the compartment. Wait a minute. I gotta take this oil can back first. Wait, nothing. If you wanted, you come down and get it now. All right. There you go, Shylock. This one won't be spending big for a while anyway. At least it didn't charge you interest. Look all the fun you had last night. Zone quarter, zone quarter. All hands manual balance. All hands manual balance.
Bridge Eye. Bridge Eye. Sir, damage control central reports all stations manned. Very well. Captain, all stations manned and ready. Very well. Hand me the one NC, Mr. Dixon. Aye, sir. This is the captain speaking. This, General Porters, is not a drill. We have a group of unidentified aircraft on our radar. If they prove to be enemy, we are ready. You all know your job. All of our drills, all of our exercises, all of our hard work have been for one reason. To do the right thing at the right time and do it automatically. Do it now and good luck. Aircraft bearing 140, position angle 35. I see them, Captain. Jet types closing. Missile control, stand by. Missile control, stand by. They're pushed over. They're diving at us. Batteries release. Batteries release. Right ball, runner. reports a bomb hit on the starboard side, seven foot below the water line, near frame 175. A rocket hit above the water line, starboard side, near frame 160. We're sending a party to the scene. Frame 175, seven feet below the water line. That means that 5-163 compartments are going to be flooded. The enemy's hits are severe, but not critical. The rocket hit was well above the water line. Bursting against the shell plating, it has holed the ship, but not dangerously. Hot splinters introduced into a compartment are potentially harmful, but seldom start serious fires in properly stowed spaces. The bomb hit was below the waterline, in a series of connected spaces, here shown in blue, with a total of 238 tons of seawater. It has increased draft aft about 24 inches. But with watertight integrity preserved, the ship will lose none of her fighting ability. But has this integrity been preserved? Prepare three, I want a full report from the party on the scene over the 2JZ circuit. Prepare three, DC Central, send a full report from the party on the scene over the 2JZ circuit. Well, that's not hot. That's good. By now, it is clear that there is no fire nor obnoxious fumes in this compartment. Johnson, raise your submergible pump! Right. Come back! Get the shard, kid! Out of our target! Tell DC Central! 3 foot of water in compartment 2 163 Dash Oscar, Dash Lima. DC Central Repair 3, Compartment 2, Dash 163, Dash Oscar, Dash Lima. Three feet of flooding water. Costello's hatch, improperly dogged, with the drop bolts only loosely set in place, has been blown open by the force of the exploding bomb. Watertight integrity has not been preserved. Progressive flooding, due to personnel error, here shown in green, threatens to cause greater harm than the original enemy damage. Hey, Chief, come up here. This hatch is hot. Chief, this hatch is hot. We're bringing out the hoses now. Oh, well, that's it, man. You hope you But down there, continue investigation. Go take no unnecessary chances. Get the hell out of there. It's too rough. Talk, I call D.C. Central. Now, press Bravo Fire. Compartment 2-155-Oscar-Lima. Hi, Chief. DC Central, repair 3. Compartment 2-155-Oscar-Lima. Pass Bravo Fire. 
fire always takes priority. Only when fire is brought under control can the repair party struggle with the water which is flooding the ship. Central, aye, aye. Sir, missile battery out of action. Lost power to missile guidance radar. Request we check the motor generator room. Very well. Pass that to repair three. Repair three, DC Central. Check the missile motor generator room. That means flooding down into the motor generator room from the berthing compartment. They've already had one bad hatch. Have they got another? Yes, another bad hatch. Or rather, badly neglected by the man responsible. Through Anderson's open scuttle pour 31 tons of seawater, increasing the stern draft another three inches and knocking out the missile guidance radar at a critical time. What else can go wrong? You men, get out of here! Central I. Sir, repair three reports of fire out of control in compartment 2-155-0 Lima, and they request permission to sprinkle after magazines 3-154-0 Mike and 3-163-0 Mike as necessary. Tell repair three to sprinkle magazines only upon direct orders from the commanding officer or damage control central. Ten men are coming aft to help them. Prepare three, DC Central. Sprinkle magazines. Prepare three, I. Chief, DC Central says to sprinkle a magazine. What? Are you sure? Yes, I checked. Williams, energize the sprinkler system. Look far only. Tucker, tell DC Central. Magazine sprinkler system has been activated. Tucker, I. DC Central, repair three. Magazine sprinkler system is activated. DC Central Repair 3, did you receive my last? Chief, I can't get through to you. Yes, phones. Errors compounded. Boyer's oil can provided the fuel for a hot fire. Hot enough to endanger the magazines and to further endanger the ship's stability by tons of firefighting water needed to control the fire. And Kramer's short timer's chain. The uncovered phone jack, short circuited by the rising floodwaters, broke vital communications at a critical time. And 135 tons of seawater in the flooded magazines increased the draft aft another 12 inches. The after five inch gun mount is without ammunition. And the repair party is isolated by the break in communications. In the meantime, Kowalski has established flooding boundaries of the aft compartments. Okay, yeah, that's it. Fighting bombers are secure. Let's go. Hey, where's that water coming from? It wasn't here when we came down. Hey, look. This is the door going down. Okay, get this door closed. Call DC Central. Secure the pump. Gordon, dunking a guy get it. Bridge Captain, combat reports many inbound aircraft, 155, 26 miles. Sir, damage control central reports unable to control flooding. Request ship be slow to stop in order to rig shoring and pumps. Stop the ship? We can't do that. We're in the middle of an air action. Captain, what do we do? Yes, what do we do? Damage that was severe but controllable is now out of hand. 
Instead of just one compartment, seven are now flooded. Costello was careless about securing the storeroom hatch. Flooding progresses. Anderson forgot about closing the scuttle. A missile battery out of action, another compartment flooded. Lieutenant J.G. Dixon didn't take time to dog down. More compartments lost. Because Gordon did not lock his locker, pumps are ineffective, clogged by clothing. And the books Jacobs didn't think he had to stow. And Boyer's thoughtless safety violation caused a severe fire. Kramer's petty theft broke vital communications, which put the after five-inch gun out of action. The final result? Damage caused by the enemy, 200 tons of seawater, draft increased aft by two feet. Fighting ability, unchanged. Condition, serious, but not critical. Damage caused by our own men. Over 400 additional tons of seawater. Draft increased aft by more than three feet. Two-thirds of the ship's firepower out of action. Stability, maneuverability, impaired. Seven sailors. Seven good sailors who knew their rates, but who ignored their full responsibility, who lost their common sense, who forgot to keep their minds on their jobs have cost their ship an important mission and their country an important link in the chain of defense.